right, um, here we're going to find an angle of depression in example four. And so this time we're actually finding the angle, we're not finding the sides. So this may be a little bit different, but this is where your arc tangents, arc sines, arc cosines come in handy. So make sure you have your calculator close to you as well. Uh, from the time a small airplane is 100 feet high and 1,600 ground feet away from its landing runway, the plane descends in a straight line to the runway. Determine the plane's angle of descent. So we need to determine your angle of depression. So if we have, let's draw the angle of descent first. So we're gonna go from here down to here. And we're gonna go draw a straight line from, oh, let's go, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? Oh, and then we need to draw a straight line out from the bottom of the plane. So even though this is on the runway, don't tell anybody. Even it should be in the air. There we go. So there's that. And then what we're also going to have is we're going to have, actually we're talking about the angle of descent. So since we're talking about the angle of descent, it's also called the angle of depression. So that angle of depression is this angle right here. But if you remember from back in the good old days of geometry, if you have a right triangle, your angle of depression right here this is your angle of depression that is the same value as your angle of elevation because you have alternate interior angles so this angle down here is called your angle of elevation but is the same measure as your angle of depression so what we have is we have an airplane that's 100 feet high in the air so this would be your 100 this would be your y height your vertical height and it's 1600 ground feet away from the landing runway here's your 1600 1600 we need to find out where theta is so we have a, an opposite side and we also have our adjacent side so this is your opposite this is your adjacent so the function that uses opposite and adjacent is We're going to say the tangent theta of 100 over 1600 is, well, we have to figure out what theta is. So in order to find your theta, you had to find the arc tangent of both sides. So we're going to take the arc tangent, or the inverse tangent of both sides. And when you take the inverse of a function, then those are just going to cancel out and you're left with just theta on the left. So we need to find out what theta is when you find the arc tangent of 100 over 1600. Or if you reduce that, you could cancel out your zeros and say one over 16. So the, that would give us an angle measure of 3.58 degrees. So keep in mind, you need to make sure that your calculator is in degrees and not radians. And that will be your night. Super sweet. Super sweet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's a leak in the toilet. Uh, oh. Gross. That's somebody else's idea, not mine.